From anatomy to anesthesiology, from pathology to pharmacology, from microbiology to medicine, a one-man resource to the world of health sciences. Welcome to Dr. Paul's Medical Lectures. A practicing physician, Dr. Paul offers you essential insights on diseases afflicting millions of people around the world. For today's lecture, here is Dr. Paul. I want to talk a few minutes about uh, Von Willebrand's disease. Von Willebrand disease is the most common congenital bleeding disorder and it affects like 1 to 2 percent of the population and it is the group of disorders caused by the abnormalities of Von Willebrand factor. Now what is Von Willebrand factor? And it, there is its uniqueness is it is synthesized, stored, and secreted by the vascular endothelial cells. It is a cofactor for platelet addition and also a carrier protein for factor VIII. So Van Willebrand factor is a very large multimeric glycoprotein. It binds to the receptor and also it bridges platelets together. And then when the subendothelial injury happens in the vascular injury site, well, one will be factor and uh, it provides that bridging to the platelets. So it forms that clump and it attaches to that uh, vascular injury area and control the bleeding. Now it is of uh, three types. Type 1 is the most common and it is a uh, partial quantitative disease. And also type 2, it's also the decrease in the one Willebrand factor. In type 3, the deficiency of one Willebrand factor is like less than 10%. So it's almost absence. So type 1, type 2, type 3. In type 3, it is almost absent. In type 1, it's almost present. So we can say which is benign, which is malignant, which is uh, less serious, which is more serious. You can guess the type 3 is most serious because one Willebrand factor is completely absent in type 3. So remember that, folks. In uh, uh, if, if it is like 90% present is uh, type 1, it is like 10 to 15% deficiency type 2, it's less than 10%, it is type 3. It depends. So the type is uh, it is classified based on the quantity and the quality. Now many people develop bleeding because of this, and particularly in children and adolescents. And the symptoms include you can guess recurrent epistaxis, gingival bleeding, and unusual bruising. Some people develop gastrointestinal bleeding with uh, epistaxis hemotaxis and also down causing melina and hematochesia. So some people develop even hemadrosis like blood within to your joint and you wonder what is happening to these joints and you test them and you will find them they have one Willebrand factor deficiency. So it has these varied manifestations as simple as gingival bleeding to as complex as gastrointestinal bleeding or joint bleeding. So in these patients you should avoid drugs like aspirin and NSAIDs and antiplatelet agents, heparin and uh, some antibiotics because these patients are very very prone to bleeding. And common abnormalities when you do the laps are they will have this prolonged bleeding time sometimes low or normal one Willebrand factor and a low one Willebrand factor activity. Interestingly, PT is usually normal and uh, factor eight is also usually normal. And so sometimes it is difficult to differentiate this disease from mild hemophilia. Yeah. Another interesting thing is in people with blood group O, they will have 30% reduction in valve in the brand factor. Okay, type blood group O compared to other groups, they have this uh, reduction in uh, one Willebrand factor. The treatment you need to remember: desmopressin. 
you can use this in type 1 and a few cases of type 2. So desmopressin, basically this is a medication that causes, you see this uh, uh, one willibrand factor, it increases the release of it from the endothelial cells. Okay, so desmopressin, you can use it at, as a medication in these patients. The problem is after four doses, patients develop tachyphylaxis. Remember that. After four doses, patients taking desmopressin develop tachyphylaxis. And in a type 2 and in type 3, you have to use the plasma products. And uh, most importantly, the cryoprecipitates. Cryoprecipitate that is containing factor 8 and 1 willibrand factor. And the problem is the cryoprecipitate can transform viruses. And there is another product called Humate P. This is also has high concentration of one willibrand factor and factor eight. So Humate P, cryoprecipitate, and uh, platelet transfusions, desmopressin, these are the most important things in, uh, in the treatment of uh, one willibrand factor deficiency. And you can also control the bleeding, like uh, you can use intranasal application of uh, uh, surgical strips. These strips, they stop bleeding whenever these children develop this nasal bleeding, sometimes microfibrillar collagen strips. Sometimes you have to cauterize when the patient develops uh, epistaxis. You can also use uh, birth control pills because birth control pills increase one willibrand factor uh, concentration in the blood and they reduce the menstrual bleeding. You can also, uh, so, uh, desmopressin is basically useful in most cases of type 1 and some cases of type 2, okay, because it is basically increasing the level of one willibrand factor and factor 8 because it is mostly secreted from endothelial cells. So remember desmopressin in type 1 and some cases of type 2 and then cryoprecipitate and uh, platelets and uh, humate P in type 2 and th type 3. In most commonly these are the things. And you can also control local bleeding using surgical strips or you can catheterize the bleeding sites. And uh, those are the things you can do to treat one willibrand disease. And please post your comments and they are highly welcome because uh, hundreds of students now watching these videos. So if you put one important point, so many students will read those points and learn something about this important disease. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening. For more medical videos, please visit us at www.drpaul.org and take time to browse through hundreds of health videos we regularly post on our site. If you are preparing for USMLE, PLAB, and other medical exams, make sure you visit our website to browse through our videos explaining the essential points you need to know before taking these examinations. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org. Thank you, and may God richly bless you. You. Are you preparing for USMLE? Please do not waste thousands of dollars on training courses. Get the books written by Dr. Paul with the student-to-student -student tips and memory aids. The success will be yours, and you will soon realize your dream of becoming a physician in the United States. If you are preparing for Step 2 Clinical Skills, study USMLE Smasher, a guide helping thousands of medical students to pass this examination. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org.